Tribe Gaming is no stranger to dominating in Call of Duty mode. Tribe Gaming, they are your Western Regional Champions. Hashtag Fear the Tribe. Led by the team's IGL bowler, they took home the crown in the 2021 Western Finals. It was a commanding victory, but things were different back then. Because in 2022, the stakes got higher. This year, both the Western and the Eastern regions collided in what would be the most competitive Call of Duty Mobile tournament of all time. And since last year, we decided to make some changes to our roster, moving both Band and Envy to Luminosity and creating what would be the first Call of Duty Mobile rivalry. One for the ages. Of course, we'll see how that plays out later. There were passionate fans, some amazing celebrations, and is that Foxness doing the clap again? Who keeps letting this man dance, bro? The Tribe Gaming Squad came back with their axes sharpened and their eyes on that championship trophy. Nothing could get in their way. This is their story on how they prove to the world the Tribe Gaming are the kings of Call of Duty Mobile. Hello, my name is Bolu. I'm the accountant for Tribe Gaming. What kind of, what kind of questions do you think is good? Okay, who do you think is, has the highest chance of clogging the toilet? Why Tech? I am Tectonic. I am a player for Tribe Gaming competing in the COD Mobile Championship. What are your thoughts about Stage 5 coming up? Do you think you'll win it? Why are you just asking me questions? Wait, I think it died. Please, I will pay you. <laughs> All right, my name is Meg. I am a content creator and a competitive player, basically. I've been with Tribe for like, has it been like two years now? What's your name? My name, like the full thing? Yeah, what's your name? My name is Jasmine Josiah Kalaola. I'm taking over. You wanna take over? I'm here? taking take over. over. Yo, mate, how are you preparing for stage five, man? Sucking uh, My name is Marshy. How are you preparing for stage five? And who do you think is the shittiest region in COD Mobile? Playing COD Mobile and NA. NA is the shittiest region? Yeah, dude. Well, we're in the state of North Carolina, but the city is Raleigh. Raleigh? 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 Raleigh. Which one? We're in Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. We're in North Carolina, Raleigh, competing in the stage five championship. Prize pool is 1.7 million, first place is 700,000. 1.7 million, but we rounded up to 2 million for better clickbait videos. Some key changes from last year's team to compared to this year's team is we added uh, Vague, Jazz, and Tech to the team. What Tech brings to the team is obviously his comms, his energy, and the fact that he is known as being like one of the best players and one of the best ARs. I don't have like no movement whatsoever. Like it's just straight gun skill. What Jez brings to the team is a calm mind. Jez is like, he, he's kind of like a core sniper and like the flex at the same time. He's one of them guys that's just an all well-rounded player. You like sniping? No. Jez is pretty quiet, but he's like one of those like silent but deadly kind of things. It's like when you take a fart, mm -hmm. they're silent, but they're also deadly. But you'll never know who it is until like obviously you check the kill feed. Meg's really good with the sub. He's probably one of the best guys on the team to win close-up engagements. I'm sorry about that, man. No. <laughs> I, I, I really apologize for that. Let's go ahead and reset. What Vague brings to the table is good communication and a laugh once in a while. Vague just brings a laugh because he's funny. What's the funniest thing he's ever done before? Oh, there's, there's a bunch. Now I messed up the hair. I gotta go fix it again. <laughs> His haircut. I'm gonna get memed. He gave himself a really bad buzz cut. Why did he do that? I don't know. I think there's a lot of dust coming out of my hair. This is called dandruff. I don't have dandruff, all right? Yeah, like, how is it different than any of the two years that you played? Because obviously, like, Why? those last two years, you had the Eastern and Western champs, right? Mm -hmm. But this time, it's like a full blown on LAN event. So, like, now you gotta face every other region. More competition, it's not as easy as it was last two years. I'm not saying it was easy, but obviously there's more competition now, which means higher chance of other teams winning than Tribe, obviously, right? My emotions for stage five is feeling... Fuck, I don't know, I don't really feel. 
you don't feel any pain? No, I don't feel anything. Okay. Go going into this tournament, I feel neutral. Leading up to the tournament, I feel pretty excited. It does still feel surreal in a way because I was obviously waiting for this for like three years now. To me, it's like kind of like the same thing with online. You know, there's a thousand viewers or whatever. What sort of outcome made you happy? I mean, it should be obvious, like winning stage five, that's like one of the biggest things here. But I do feel like we have a high chance of winning. Like we, like we have the ability to do it, but it might not be today. It might not be the play. Hey, you gonna go back and challenge the driver? Yeah, she gets that. What team are you most looking forward to playing in this tournament? We are heading into what I would say is the most highly anticipated match of the day. The Kings of the West Tribe Gaming going up against Q9, who has been very dominant recently. First time we play Q9, which is known to be the number two Chinese team, but that's only because they lost stage four against Wolves, but in reality, they won every other event prior to that. They're arguably one of the best teams in the game. Like everyone knows Q9. Like you, you don't play Kata without knowing Q9. I think heading into this one, obviously got to give the edge to Tribe. Their number one go-to game mode has always been hard point. Game plan is to have a strong map one. And if I had to guess, that might be the end of map one. Tribe, so clean on the breaks. The holds have been untouchable. We started the match off against Q9. Uh, strongly winning the hard point comfortably. You can see the importance that the teamwork play for Tribe Gaming right now. A dominant map one. I was definitely expecting a lot more from Q9, especially since going into the tournament, that was like the one team we like absolutely bought the fuck out of. There you go, Tribe Gaming. Okay, Tribe Gaming What a beautiful win! After we won that game, we felt pretty confident because we beat the one team that we knew we needed to work hard to beat. And as I wouldn't say it was easy, but after getting that game out of the way, we felt a lot more comfortable going into like the next group up match and the tournament itself. After beating Q9, we drew Scars next round, a team that honestly we had very little intel on since they're in our group, but you know, after asking other players who've screened them, uh, I think we got a good idea of what we wanted to do against them. The thing about Scars is a lot of teams said that Scars was up there level with like Q9 and stuff. I didn't really feel like it was. What are your thoughts on the matchup at hand? You know, I'm, I'm glad that you asked, because I've been watching. Uh, here's the thing, Tribe's really good. Yeah, I think they're, so. They're really, really yeah, good. I think like, pretty, the pretty thing good. about this entire series so far, at least from my perspective, kind of watching in the green room, is like, Scars isn't playing terribly bad. It's just Tribe is better. Yeah. When we played them, it turned out to be easier than we thought. Uh, we beat them pretty comfortably. After going 2-0 in the day, personally, uh, I felt uh, neutral because it's only day one, and what matters is day two. So we did what was expected, and what everyone expected us to do is uh, move on to the next day. With the day one in the books, Tribe Gaming came out with a perfect 2-0 record. But at the start of day two, things took a turn for the worst. Starting day two, we drew up Wolves in the quarterfinals, uh, the number two Chinese team. So beating Q9 gave us confidence knowing that if we can beat Q9 this comfortably, it would be the same as playing as Wolves. And we haven't talked about this a lot, but like, Tribe had the target on their back. Spotlight yep. has been centered solely on them. Made more so and more kind of concentrated off the fact that Team Almighty doesn't even make it through the group. So you start to all of a sudden say, yeah, okay, now this is Tribe's tournament to win. How about a team like Wolves to actually kind of throw that up in the air for a contestant? I think what went wrong was that as a team, we weren't just playing together, trying everybody trying to make their own hero plays. I think we lost because it was the first match and like, I don't think we were checked in. We were locked in we were like checked out. I think, I think mentally we were just like, oh, you know, it's Wolves. We beat them in scrims. Some people were just like, oh, look, Lexic Daisy. Losing to Wolves was a good reality check for us to not underestimate any team. We play our best when the pressure is on and our, ones, our one uh, ticket to 
you know, the winner's bracket final was gone, so it was, it was all or nothing. And the team conversation we had was to play our game, play confident, don't relax, stay composed, and don't underestimate anyone because, you know, in a world championship stage, anything can happen. As Tribe's loss against Wolves only fueled their fire to win more. More motivated than ever before, they were ready to dominate, annihilate, and obliterate all competition. I think being in the losers bracket helped us a lot. Being being able to continuously play matches. You know, our team is in the losers bracket. You know, we're we're down there and we don't want to go home. And you know, whatever team matches up against us, we're just gonna have to send them to the airport. And we matched up against Stamina, the number one team from Europe. Going into it, Hardpoint Takeoff, I believe, was the first match. We ended up blowing the shit out of them. So that right there mentally checked them out. Tribe, a hundred point lead right here. Big doing it all 36 kills. As things start to build up and then we create, you know, gain momentum and whatever, and we ended up beating them 3-0. Uh, that was the wake-up call for us that we knew this was it. Oh, slowly but surely, the dreams of stamina are gonna be dwindling. As a team, we knew that stamina is a great team. Uh, they have great players, definitely a team that you can't underestimate. Just like that, Tribe closes things out in a dominant win. Woo! That must feel good if you are Tribe, especially coming in from that loss. After beating Stamina, we matched up against Omega, which was the number two team from Garena. Uh, this is a matchup that most people in the world wanted to see how a top Garena team would match up against the number one NA team. I think. Maybe they didn't study us as much as uh, we did to them. You know, we wanted to go into that hard point summit against them because we knew that our gun skill would be better than theirs. And as you saw, we almost 100 point on them on the summit. Omega losing some steam right now. I do hope to see them bounce back in the control and at least give us a good series. I think that we were a bit surprised how lacking of gun skill they had. It's not looking good for Smart Omega right now. They're getting picked, in, picked apart. Obviously, they had good team play, but our team has just was better on an individual level, so beating them was pretty comfortable. Oh, Tribe moves on into the next leg of the competition. Omega goes home. That propelled us into the next round. We talk about like how like you know we wanted to play them. You know, we wanted to like we wanted them to beat Skate to get that rematch. Denying the reverse sweep and moving into the lower semis. Unbelievable. Well, we wanted to go up against Wolves to get revenge. We wanted to play against Wolves to show that uh, they are not better than us and that the fact they beat us was a fluke. We want to be the best team and we don't want to win a tournament with, uh, with losing to one team. Wolves and Tribe Gaming have survived a lower bracket run, but only one can continue to Championship Sunday. My calling was very good. Uh, I still believe that this team can win and I think that the team trusted everything that I said, on the SD especially. G would be behind this play, but can he get here fast enough? There are so many tribe members in front of him. Jez, oh, he shuts him down with a quick scope of his life. Shooting inside Cubby, nothing there. Trying for the retake. Making those comebacks round by round, crucial moment by crucial moment, down to the wire. And I think our team had the better clutch factor. We went into overtime, won both OT rounds. Predicts the Cubby, no one home. Second chance, sees Tech over the top. Oh, not gonna happen, Marshy underneath them. And that was the most critical game, and as you can see when we won that map too, I had the most passion out of the whole year. I stood up and started yelling at them, because I knew that when we won that game, the series is ours, because if we win that SMG, we're gonna win the next two respawn maps, because those respawn maps heavily favored us. Clock starts to tick away. Jing has an operator if he needs it. But instead, contests, claws, will flush them out from the background. How have tribes survived this? The gravity vortex going to lock it in. Eight seconds left. Sigh on the long flank. No one's seen this yet. The first one will drop. Two seconds. You got to get on. You got to touch. Tribe trying to hold on. The gun fights inside. They go the way of tribe. And the clock will expire. And getting that feeling of revenge and like beating the team that sent us to the um, Loser's bracket and then beating that team again to send them back home to the airport was a really nice feeling. Tribe trying to put the game away right here. They also have the benefit of the proximal spots to do, but they want to see a W right here, right now. Wolves still fighting. They 
it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Holy fuck! <laughs> Their revenge against wolves was sweet. So the boys got some much needed rest for finals day. Championship Sunday. This is where things got heated. After beating wolves, the next day preparation was to make sure the team had a good sleep before finals. Uh, at this point in your career in mobile gaming and competing, the most important thing you can do before a World Championship Final is to get good sleep and good breakfast. Here we go, starting things off, take off match number one on Hardpoint. At the beginning of map one against Inco, we already had one prior reset to the map to fix uh, Wi-Fi problems. And for them, they didn't want to play on the ping, but according to admins and referees, we had to play on it until they would throw a, a red card down. But apparently the admin said that that wasn't the case. Their Wi-Fi was good, and they just had to stop playing because they thought it would get paused. Unfortunately, it didn't. Hey, here's the thing. If anyone's familiar with competitive COD Mobile, you keep playing until admins say stop. We have not gotten that word yet. You have to be competing in those moments, and you have to let the referee pull you out. Otherwise, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. It's good that we won, but it, 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 to me, it just sucks the way that we did win. Why? Because I feel like if I'm ever going to win a tournament, I want to prove I'm the best whenever everyone's at their max potential, not whenever people are lagging and disconnecting. And now you're dealing with a 100-point deficit as Inko are finally starting to come out and starting to play. And you've got streaks, you've got operators. This could get really ugly really quickly. It, it sucks. Like, I, I've... I really wanted to restart that match with Inko. I don't want to win like that. Still find a way to extend this one more hard point because you can still win here if you're trying. Bolu letting them have it. And that will be 250 to 45 at the moment. And again, just because I know all of you out there are probably wondering what's happened. Uh, we don't know. All we know is the word was play on and Tribe sure did that. After the map won, we went into SNE standoff, a map we haven't lost to the tournament and we went up 4-0, having a great start. Bob's being defused though, and Tech will just hold for it. Dan never getting a luck. The just claw was pretty huge for the team. It was huge, the clutch was huge. And Jez, he's not gonna have information that no. all the players are coming from this. This is just quick scope city from Jez. No names, just the scope. Might be all he needs. First shot, oh! My jaw like quite literally dropped. The odds of that ever happening where the guy on tractor and statue line up are like too damn slim. We talked about it. Jez lives for these moments. Take a look at it one more time. You can't write a better story than that. Post plan situation, 1v2, you set quick scope, he'll take two to go. We made our mistake to go to the loser's bracket and you know when you match up against us, we're not going home, so uh, sending Inko home was uh, sad, but it had to be done. Tribes punch their ticket to the Grand Finals. All North America Finals, here we come. A reprise of Stage 4 Finals is on the horizon here on land. After beating Inko, uh, definitely respect all the players, as you saw, I'm friends with a few of them. And at the end, we gave them our, our props, shook their hands. Uh, they deserve it. They represent the country really well. You know, everything that you see in Game Aside, you know, the body shots, that's just Cody Esports. <laughs> one, the, one, <laughs> yeah. the one thing you really have to tip to Tribe, their esportsmanship is honestly just remarkable. What was it like beating your old teammates, Van and Envy? Well, we're going to talk about the relationship first. Going up against Luminosity, they had two players that I won stage five with last year, Ben and Envy. Uh, definitely two guys that I respect a lot. Uh, for me, dropping those two players for Jez and Tech would be... God, I'm trying to think, because I'm trying to say, like, if I lost to them, I'd be like, I made the wrong choice. LG, we were definitely the most comfortable with, and one of the reasons is because that was the main team that we constantly scrimmed, played, and did whatever with every single day. I guess you could say my mindset was kind of like, you know, we, we beat LG all year, just have to do it one final time. 
Marshy, Vague, Tectonic, Molu, and Jess, Tribe Gaming! Will they keep the victory three years in a row? A rivalry that knows no boundaries. These two squads have played against each other time and time again. But this time, it's for the World Championship. Only one can be crowned king. Who will win? Let's find out. Losing this series to Luminosity would show that I made the wrong choice. Losing that series would be something I was thinking about for the rest of my life because it was destiny that this matchup would be the final game. It was something from above made this happen. All the hours, all the blood, sweat, and tears going into this matchup. Starting map one, we had Hot Point Takeoff which is a map we haven't lost in the tournament. And going in, we had a game plan of playing confidence, uh, having me, Martian, Big, focused on OBJ, Tech, and Jez overlooking us. And it worked out great. We won the map very convincingly. Gets up, your fire kill, goes in this hill all alone, and yes, he secures it for his team. Drive Gaming gets map number one. Well, just like that, winner's bracket advantage is completely gone. They knew how we play and we know how they play. So I think creating different strategies in the moment was crucial for us to win that. Only one tick needed for Tribe to close out here on the offensive side. Marshy, it's all Tribe in the feed. Luminosity started out strong but lose all momentum mid-round and they can't seem to find a kill. The tick goes through and Tribe takes round one. Game three was the control raid, which was, was honestly one of the most crazy maps. And this, this map honestly changed the series of the game because if we lost this map, we would have lost the series. How does he get the kill right there? Oh Bolu goes big as well. The lives have been equalized. Tribe can't seem to lose a gunfight right here. And only a little bit more time needed. Bolu's got a claw ready to go. Can he go big right here? The objective capture goes through. Tribe Gaming, one game away from a world championship. I got three kills and I pulled out the claw, which was the perfect timing to get. I just held the shoot button and they couldn't push and we capped it. It was an amazing moment. You saw the passion after that. Winning that map, I knew we had the series secure, even if we lost the next two maps. Obviously, we lost to Hacienda. Uh, Tech had a great game, but it's just we, other, you know, our, our, me and other teammates couldn't really pick up uh, the, right, the right positioning and they just outplayed us fairly. Luminosity, despite the 59 from Tectonic, come out with the win. I think what affected our SMB standoff was my calling uh, because I became uh, relaxed in a, in a way where it was negative because you have you know, demons getting in your head where like it's telling you that you're, you're going to win the tournament, you're visualizing lifting the trophy, but the series isn't done and those having those thoughts in your mind while playing a strategic mode like SMD is very bad. And there you go. It's gonna be one v two situation. Still very doable for this one player left. Bolu, seven seconds, but obviously there's gonna be a defuse that's gonna be happening right there. Solo saves it for them. Luminosity, another hat pulled out. A trick up their sleeves. They win that SMD standoff with such great. After the game six loss, it was definitely a blow to our team. When, when the series is tied up, that's when it's all or nothing. You know, that's when I actually snapped, I snapped out of it and I was like, we're gonna have to focus this game. Three and three is going to be our scoreline. One map to make the biggest difference. And of course, we're heading into a game number seven in our grand finals. Preparation for game seven was to play our game. This was the last game of the year. and. Uh, I remember Marshy saying to give it our all. That's what we did. Two way, two way, two way. Nice, support, support. Nice. Yo, I, yo. Nice. I still, I still have my awkward. Hey, hey, Marshy, I have that. I have that. Don't use your awkward. Please, don't use it. I would like to say that of all the years that I played with Bolu, that one game-changing callout he made was the best one of his whole career. The, the strategy that I had to going into this game was on every offensive round, I told the team, uh, don't use your operators, save them for defense only, because all we have to do is win three defensive rounds to win the tournament. And I think that's the, the, that was the game-winning decision for our team. Barring a miracle from Tribe to close things out. And ladies and gentlemen, it's only right 
that we go to game seven, round five. The moment I knew we were gonna win was actually later than I expected. Uh, the live count was like, they only had two left. And I was playing the game like, we were still competing. And <laughs> even though the round was basically over, the, the, the moment I realized we won was when the timer went to zero. But one by one, they fall as Tribe Gaming cuts them down. The bodies are shot. The rest of this basically history. We ended up winning, and it was a really good moment for sure. It's something that I'll always remember for the rest of my life. It was probably the best feeling, in my opinion. That was like kind of happiness, of course. The, the motherfuckers zoom in onto your face when you cry. I notice esports people do that, which is it's whatever. But like, it was more relief than happiness because it showed that, uh, like we talked about earlier, it was the right decision that I made to have a team with this team this year, and winning with these guys meant. Some. Uh, the world to me, I would say. The best team I've ever teamed with. And with that, we lifted the trophy again. And our 2022 season came to a close. Now, we set our eyes on 2023.